Hi guys, it is time for another Ant Subong video. This is the part 2 video, a continuation of the Tetraponera Rofronigra founding queen development. Please keep in mind that this video consists of one or two other colonies for me to depict the ants growth update. Let us begin right away. From where we left off, things have changed quite a bit. In the sixth week, many pupae formed and one in particular started to show signs of growth. Color's pigments have begun to form on her. It is faint, but you can tell it is colored. At this stage they are still lifeless and vulnerable. The pupae are still shriveled and look suspended in time. The antenna and legs are still tucked in. Do you know that during the pupae stage, they are not fed nor do they eat? That is why, during the larvae stages, the queen fed them until it turned into a plumpy nugget. Once it has all the nourishment needed to morph into the pupae, food is not the issue anymore. The brood size has doubled since the last time we saw them. They have been fed constantly by the mother queen, and I made sure she got every bit of protein I gave her. You can tell they have been eating a whole lot, from the brownish coloration on the larvae's midsection. Tetraponera rufronigra are day ants. One thing to note, during these founding stages, the queen doesn't really feed during the day. Perhaps it is a defensive instinct. Feeding in the dark is much safer than during the day. I noticed she comes out during the nighttime quite regularly. She will sneak outside to munch on the feeder insects I gave, a few hours before. I have learned to feed her much later during the night now. This way, she can enjoy the juicy bits of the insects, and not the dried out ones. She loves to drink the insect juices, much easier and faster to consume. I sat and watched her with a dimly lit table light. She will gorge herself with as much food as she can eat. Never once did she feel fidgety while feeding at this time. I try not to make any sudden movements as she is very alert during this stage and can detect the slightest movement. I watched her fill her gaster and only make one trip back to feed her brood. It took a long time feeding her babies before coming out again. By the seventh week, there is a sign of drastic change, the broods are getting larger, taking up the entire brood chamber. It looks kind of cramp in there. The queen has spent a lot of energy just to feed her youngs, and it is in her sheer willpower that she get this far. The first pupae that we saw the week before has much prominent colors now. You can tell the black contrast from the lighter color on her thorax. She doesn't really stop and even laid some fresh eggs as well. Week 8 was very promising. My first Tetraponera rufronigra nanitics is showing signs of life. Now she is just chilling, waiting for her body to harden. Once her body hardens, you can see the orange color thorax begin to show brightly. Ever wonder why Tetraponera rufronigra has striking bicolored orange and black? They are a classic example of warning coloration, sending a message to predators to stay away. In this case, I did not care. I am happy again as this time it will be my colony to keep. Hopefully. I want to share a few points which I think I owe to some of you. 
I will try to explain it as simple as I can. So here is to answer a few questions I received from part 1 of this video. I mentioned that the process from eggs to pupae took slightly over 5 weeks. This is based on the room temperature between 27 degrees to 28 degrees Celsius. Some wanted to know if I used a heating pad for the founding queen because they are unable to keep a constant temperature. It is impossible to keep a constant temperature, and I advise against using any heating pad. It is dangerous if not used correctly and will end up killing the broods. Sometimes after a rainstorm, the room from which I store my ants will get a little chilly. The temperature will drop to about 25 degrees during the night. I will just simply cover the test tube setup with a thick towel. I am not sure if it works to bring up the temperature, but I have been doing this for a piece of my mind. About humidity, Tetrapanera rofronigra requires no moisture in the nest, but just water through the cotton in the end of the test tube, that is all. Avoid stressing them. Their ability to hunt insects is spectacular with very good eyesight and detecting movement. So any external movement or physically applied ones will cause a significant reaction to the queen. After a day or two, the nanitic started walking around and doing her job to care for the rest of her unborn sisters. Even at this early stage she is fearless, this lone nanitic doesn't seem afraid about going out to investigate the new world. She even fed on the dried up food left out for two days already. This is a very good sign, she is healthy and is ready to serve the queen. Right now, I'm still studying their behavior, the queen doesn't go out to feed as much now. She always stays close to the chamber entrance. Perhaps, since the new nanitix is born, she doesn't seem to worry about brood caring anymore. Maybe the burden is shared, to divide and conquer. Nonetheless, I am very satisfied with how things developed. In the past, bearing this species has never been fruitful. I have learned from every failure, and I am confident more success will come. Remember what I said in the previous part 1 of the video? That the larvae are stationary and not moving at all. Let me speed the video up a little, so that it will be interesting to watch how they process the food in their belly. I find this amusing every time I watch it. Don't you think? I have recently caught another new queen to add to my collection. Found her in a hot sunny afternoon and rained the night before. This one has kept her wings and laid a bunch of eggs after a week or so. Unlike the others, she decided to make her nesting chamber closer to the feeding area. She has been eating profusely and always hangs out at the food area. I always find queens, which has kept her wings, very majestic and unique. I hope she doesn't remove her wings, this will make her the special one. What do you think? Let me know at the comments below. We have reached to the end of the video. If you are new to this channel, please hit the like and subscribe button. It will be a big encouragement for me to continue producing more videos to this channel. Thanks for watching. Ants Subang.